Welcome to our presentation on the question, do linked open data conventions impede the representation of diversity? The case of disabled actors in DBpedia and Wikidata. I am Bettina Behrendt, and this is joint work with Jan Kabos, whose bachelor thesis and all details on data interviews, queries, concepts, and methodology you'll find on our website. The motivation for our study was the continued underrepresentation of disabled people as a threat to diversity. In our data, um, for example, we find about 10% as the proportion of disabled people in the population at large, which is reduced to just over 1% in roles in film and television. There are some well-known structural impediments in the film industry that hinder the inclusion of disabled actors, and we found these reflected in our interviews as well. But when we studied the entries for actors in DBpedia and Wikidata, we found a further reduction to about 0.2%. And we were wondering, are there structural impediments via LOD's own principles and conventions? So the result are four provocations that I want to uh, put to you in the form of four questions. All of them arise from LOD principles and conventions that make a lot of sense. And um, therefore it's provocations. So the first considers the heterogeneity that we find in many collaboratively edited knowledge bases. There are heterogeneous categories. They look intentionally related, but then they have different extensions and it's not clear how to aggregate over them in order to count. For example, there is the category hearing loss in Wikidata. An individual has a hearing loss or hearing impairment. This is known as person first language and it's considered very respectful because it puts the person first. But there are also other categories such as deaf or deaf person, a subclass of hearing impaired person where the individual is a um, instance of this category. And it's not clear how this relates and should be aggregated with uh, the hearing loss. The second convention is called disability first and sometimes also identity first language. Now, is this only some linguistic variation? No. We find voices from disabled people such as the following. Non-disabled people often want to separate the disability from the identity. This is the person first language. This doesn't make sense to me because we do not separate gender, race, sexuality, or religion from our identity in the same way. I am a woman, not a person with womanliness. In addition to this strange separation, some people also uh, consider there to be undertones of the person would be better off without that condition. And that's of course disrespectful. Now choices and language preferences do differ among individuals and groups, whether disabled or non-disabled, but probably um, things such as person with disabilities said to be the same as disability would be a statement we would all agree on uh, avoid to be avoided. So we do not want to identify and equate a person with a disability. Are we even allowed to say that a person is disabled? This is questionable. If we look at modern models of disability, we see um, that there is an emphasis on disability resulting from the interaction between individuals with a health condition and their environment, such as this one from the World Health Organization. This social model of disability stands in contrast to the medical model of disability that is very much expressed in hierarchies of conditions and associated classes of people. It becomes very weird when medical condition is somehow looked at as an alias of disability and disease. Now, who would be in the best position to describe such interactions that lead to their being disabled or even decide whether they feel disabled? Individuals themselves. And we hear them saying, for example, I am not disabled, I am just small. 
with regard to the hearing example, that would be, I just can't hear. It is increasingly being realized that self-ascription is central and authoritative. For example, in labor law, you are the one who decides whether to specify and describe a disability or not and claim the treatment uh, which has some advantages in your work environment. Our interviewees welcomed the recent introduction by Filmmakers Europe casting database of a free form field to be filled by actors themselves describing their diversity, including possible disabilities. Now this focus on autonomy stands in marked contrast to rules such as the one in Wikidata that if you talk about a person having a medical condition, you need to provide a reference or the strong discouragement of Wikipedia to write about yourself. Now, what are we to make of this? Should we encourage or even force everyone to, uh, to write about their own conditions or disabilities, if you will? Should we ask people to provide a reference for that? Or should we bar them from that? Very open questions here. And um, in general, this presents us with uh, many open questions to be addressed by LOD. And now I look forward to your comments and questions. Thank you.